What if I told you the best running back in the NFL just completely vanished one day? Well, that's what happened to Todd Gurley. But after days of research, I think I uncovered the truth behind his disappearance and what really went down with his bizarre injury cover-up. Todd Gurley was a four-star recruit coming out of high school. Despite not playing on varsity till his junior year, he was ranked as the sixth best running back in the class of 2012. After receiving offers from top Power 5 schools like Clemson and Auburn, Gurley committed to Georgia. Immediately after arriving on campus, the running back made an impact. In the team's first game of the season, the true freshman Gurley carried the ball eight times for 100 yards and two touchdowns. Then on kick return duties, he got into the end zone yet again. After his outstanding collegiate debut, Todd was named the Bulldog starter heading into the team's second game. His phenomenal play continued as the season went along. Gurley finished his freshman year with an average of 6.2 yards per carry, 1,500 yards from scrimmage, and 17 total touchdowns. Gurley started the following season with a bang. The running back averaged a whopping 12.8 yards per carry for 154 yards and two touchdowns in a loss versus Clemson. However, just three weeks later, Gurley injured his ankle in a game versus LSU. The high ankle sprain kept him sidelined for a month, but when he returned, he looked back to his old self finishing the season with 1,400 yards from scrimmage and 16 total touchdowns. Just like the year prior, Todd went off in Georgia's season opener versus Clemson. This time around, he averaged 13.2 yards per carry for 198 yards and three touchdowns. Then, three games later versus Tennessee, he had 208 rushing yards and two scores. After rushing for over 900 yards and nine touchdowns in just six games, it looked like Todd Gurley was about to make history and possibly take home the Heisman. However, this is when things started to go downhill for the running back. On October 9th, 2014, Gurley was suspended indefinitely by Georgia over an alleged violation of NCAA rules. Two days later, it was determined that the running back received $3,000 for signing autographs and memorabilia, which resulted in a four-game suspension. But then, in his first game back, Todd tore his ACL and was out for the season. Despite missing the majority of his junior year, Year, his numbers when he was on the field were fantastic. So Todd chose to forego his senior season and declared for the 2015 NFL Draft. Gurley was projected to be a first round pick, but there were still a ton of questions surrounding his health. How quickly would his knee heal? And would he still be the same player after such a serious injury? Well, draft day arrived and the Rams selected Todd Gurley with the 10th overall pick. Gurley tore his ACL in November, so he wasn't cleared to play in any preseason games or take any contact in training camp. Finally, heading into week three of the regular season, Gurley was cleared to play. In his NFL debut, Gurley had just six carries for nine yards. He had such a small workload since it was his first game back and the team was just trying to play it safe. However, the following week, Gurley got the training wheels taken off. He was a full go and showed the world he was all the way back. In that game versus the undefeated Cardinals, the rookie running back averaged seven yards per carry for 146 rushing yards. The following week, he played even better, carrying the rock 30 times for an insane 159 yards. In his first four NFL starts, Todd racked up a total of 566 yards, which was the first time a player had accomplished this feat since the NFL AFL merger. Gurley finished his rookie season by averaging nearly five yards a carry for 1,100 rushing yards and 10 scores. He was named a Pro Bowler and took home the Rookie of the Year award. After an outstanding first season, Todd Gurley was now on everyone's radar including opposing defenses. With a struggling rookie Jared Goff under center, teams weren't afraid of the Rams' passing game, so they stacked the box to stop LA's best player, Todd Gurley. During his second season in the league, Todd didn't rush for over 100 yards in a single game. He averaged just over three yards per carry and ended the year with a disappointing 885 rushing yards and six touchdowns. However, this down year actually changed Gurley's career for the better. You see, after the Rams won just four games that that season, Jeff Fisher was fired. To replace him, the Rams hired this new young offensive guru, Sean McVay. McVay was bringing in a new, exciting offensive game plan that would surely be better than Fisher's, which Gurley called a quote, middle school offense. Part of McVay's plan was to utilize Gurley more in the pass game 
and it worked. By week three, Todd was looking like his old self. After having nearly 150 yards from scrimmage and three total touchdowns in a game versus the 49ers. The following week, Gurley was even more dominant, putting up a whopping 215 yards from scrimmage and a touchdown. His best game of the season came in week 16 versus the Titans. In that one, Todd had 118 rushing yards while also hauling in 10 catches for 158 yards and two scores. That adds up to a crazy 276 yards from scrimmage. After locking up their playoff spot, the Rams decided to rest Gurley for the final game of the season, which resulted in him losing the rushing title to Kareem Hunt. But Todd still finished the season with the most total touchdowns and the most yards from scrimmage in the league. As the playoffs approached, the three seed Rams were set to host the six seed Falcons. Once the game kicked off, Atlanta went up 13-0 early. With the Falcons having the lead and controlling time of possession, the Rams couldn't run the ball as much as they usually did. Gurley carried the rock just 10 times in this one, but was extremely efficient, racking up over 100 yards. However, in the past game, he was shut down, catching just four balls for 10 yards. The young Rams couldn't overcome the early deficit and lost 26 to 13. Todd Gurley finished the 2017 season with 1,300 rushing yards, 13 rushing touchdowns, 788 receiving yards, and six receiving scores. He became the eighth player in NFL history to have over 1,300 rushing yards and 750 receiving yards in a single season, and was named a Pro Bowler as well as a first team All Pro. Gurley also took home the Offensive Player of the Year award and even came in second for the MVP behind Tom Brady. Now, Todd Gurley was not just the best running back in the league, he was one of the best players in it. Period. So in April 2018, the Rams made Todd Gurley the highest paid running back in the NFL, giving him a four-year, $65 million deal with $45 million guaranteed. This contract changed the NFL forever and not in a positive way, but we'll get to that in a moment. Heading into the 2018 season, there was a ton of hype surrounding the Rams. They were coming off a year where they just won the NFC West, had their sophomore quarterback break out, and of course had the best player in the league in their backfield. To begin the year, both Gurley and the team lived up to expectations. The Rams started the season 8-0, and during that stretch, Todd was averaging over 100 yards and nearly two touchdowns a game. In week six alone, he rushed for over 200 yards. By week 13, the Rams had yet again locked up the NFC West title. But in a week 14 matchup versus the Eagles, Todd Gurley missed an offensive series before returning to the field. After the game ended, it was reported that he tweaked his knee the same knee that he tore his ACL in, and would be sidelined for the team's Week 16 game. After sitting out that Week 16 matchup, it was reported he would also miss the team's Week 17 game due to knee inflammation. At this point, it seemed like the Rams were sitting out Gurley as a precaution, just to make sure he was 100% ready to go for the playoffs. McVay even told the media, quote, based on the information that I'm getting and just talking to Todd, I wouldn't say that I'm concerned. The Rams finished the regular season as the two seed in the NFC and were set to host the four seed Cowboys in the divisional round. Gurley was good to go for the team's first playoff game and was extremely effective, rushing for 115 yards and a score on just 16 carries. But he actually wasn't the Rams running back with the most carries that game. That was CJ Anderson, who the team just signed in December when Gurley went down with his injury. Anderson had 23 carries for 123 yards in that one. It was pretty weird to see him get so many carries when Gurley was apparently healthy again. Everyone was curious why Todd was on the sideline so much. After winning that game, the Rams traveled to New Orleans to take on the one-seed Saints in the NFC Championship game. However, this is where things got even weirder for Todd Gurley. On the Rams' first offensive series of the game, it looked like Todd would be getting his normal number of carries. But after having two carries on the team's first two drives, Gurley wasn't handed the ball till there were just seconds left in the first half. The game went to overtime and the Rams eventually won, punching their ticket to the Super Bowl. But Gurley was barely on the field. That game, the running back had only four carries for 10 yards and a score. His backup, CJ Anderson, had 16 carries for 44 yards and was on the field for more snaps than Gurley. Now every 
everyone was super confused. The Rams never said Gurley was injured, so why wasn't he getting carries? Post game, the Rams acted like Gurley wasn't getting snaps due to CJ Anderson playing so well. But that wasn't true because Anderson only averaged 2.8 yards per carry. Quarterback Jared Goff said, quote, you just have to feed off what we're doing, and CJ was running the ball well. I expect Todd to have a hell of a game in the Super Bowl, though. When asked why Anderson played more than Gurley, McVay responded, quote, that was just kind of the feel for the flow of the game. Not anything against Todd, CJ did a nice job, but I think the Saints did a nice job as a whole slowing down our run game, and we kind of just had to grind some things out. Gurley agreed with the notion that Anderson outplayed him. I didn't play good. I didn't deserve to be in there. CJ was in there. He did his thing. Everybody held me down. We all held each other. We just got it done. Thank you, Lord. The next day, McVay confirmed that Gurley was healthy by saying, quote, Todd is healthy and he's feeling good. He sure looked pretty healthy on that touchdown run. In the week leading up to the Super Bowl, Sean McVay yet again decided to announce the star running back was healthy, telling the media, quote, he's feeling good, 100%. We expect him to play a big role in this game. But at this point, no one really believed him. It was obvious something was up but the Rams were hiding it. The Rams' first offensive play of the Super Bowl was a Todd Gurley run that went for two yards. However, after that, Todd didn't get another carry till midway through the second quarter. Like what? McVay just said he was 100%. The Rams often struggled mightily versus the Patriots defense and failed to score a single touchdown in their Super Bowl loss. Gurley finished the game with just 10 carries for 35 yards. After the game, both he and Sean McVay insisted he was healthy and that his knee was fine. Todd, are you healthy? Yeah, yes, sir. Todd is healthy, and you know, it, we just didn't really get a chance to get anybody going today offensively. However, after the season ended, the truth about Todd Gurley's situation began to emerge. Former running back Maurice Jones Drew revealed that Todd Gurley told him he injured his knee in the team's week one game against the Raiders. Gurley then played through the injury, which gradually worsened as the season progressed. Reports then came out that Todd's mysterious knee injury was actually arthritis, which his trainer confirmed. This was extremely bad news because arthritis can't be cured. Arthritis is swelling or tenderness in a joint, which usually leads to the bones that joint connects rubbing together. It's a somewhat common thing for people to experience who have undergone an ACL repair surgery. But the thing is, once you develop arthritis, it can't be reversed. You can only do things to prevent it from getting worse. It was then reported that because of this, Gurley might have to undergo a stem cell procedure to try and prevent the arthritis from advancing. Things looked even worse when the Rams decided to use their third round pick on Daryl Henderson. People wondered if he was drafted to replace Gurley. Heading into the 2019 season, Ian Rappaport reported that Todd's days of being in every down back were over. Gurley had been on the field more than any other running back the past few seasons. Throughout his first four years in the league, Gurley led the NFL in carries even though he missed six regular season games. Heading into the 2019 season, Todd was healthy and cleared to play. In week one, he actually looked like his old self, averaging over six yards per carry for 97 yards. But then it all went downhill. The first game of the season actually ended up being Gurley's best game of the season. He didn't rush for over 100 yards in a single game and finished the year averaging just over three yards per carry for 857 yards and 12 touchdowns. After the season ended at just 25 years old, Gurley was released from the Rams. No team was even interested in trading for the running back that had been an all pro just a year prior. So teams must have known the knee was in bad shape. In April, Gurley signed a one year deal with the Falcons. Entering the 2020 season, he was named Atlanta starter. But once he got on the field, the running back's play just continued to decline. He was a shell of his former self, and as the season went on, he got less and less carries. Todd finished the year with just 678 rushing yards and nine touchdowns. Entering the 2021 season, Todd Gurley was an unsigned free agent 
And in 2022, he officially announced his retirement from the NFL at just 28 years old. So why did Gurley fall off so quickly? How did this arthritis pop up out of nowhere and ruin his career? Was it preventable or was he just unlucky? Well, there is no official information out there regarding when Todd's arthritis started. But like I said prior, it's not uncommon for someone who underwent an ACL repair to develop arthritis. What is uncommon? common though is for it to develop that fast in a young person. Did the arthritis develop this quickly because he was used so much by the Rams in not just the run game but the pass game as well? Maybe. I'm not a doctor but I can't see that being good for his knee. Why did the Rams hide the injury? Did they not know exactly what it was? Did they believe his knee was really just sore and inflamed? But I think it's fair to wonder what would have happened to Todd Gurley if he didn't play as many snaps. Would he have had a few more years in the league? After receiving such a huge contract and being out of the league three years later, teams have now been very wary of giving running backs big contracts or contracts at all. Teams now seem content drafting a running back every few years and letting him walk after his rookie deal expires. The fall of Todd Gurley is a bizarre story that will be remembered for a long time for many reasons. Another player that had a similar but even crazier fall than Todd Gurley was Michael Thomas. If you want to see what really happened to this other former Offensive Player of the Year, check out this video up here. I really think you'll like it though, because there was a lot of stuff I didn't know about the Michael Thomas situation before making that video. 